Hi everyone, this is Brian McInerney, the hydrologist with the National Weather Service in Salt Lake City. This is a water supply briefing for April 2014. And I know we've shown this before on some of our briefings, but it's important that we look at the January weather pattern to see how our winter shaped up. And when you look at this image, this is a, an image of the winds at 11,500 feet uh, about mid-January. I took this off of and it's important to see that this big weather feature that extends from Alaska and goes all the way down almost to the equator is a big blocking high pressure. And this high pressure, when, it, when the weather hits it from the west, it's shunted north up to the north aspect of Alaska, drops down to south central U.S. and then back up into the east coast. This is why we did not have much snow, much weather for the first part of the winter. And you look at the western U.S. in this area here, and you can see we were pretty much shut out just because this blocking high set up. It, it stayed there until the end of January, and it's really been there in some form for the last three years. When you look at the precip anomaly as a result of that weather feature, you see a, a pattern of dryness. Warm colors indicate below average precip. Cooler colors indicate above normal precip. Montana, Wyoming, Colorado did quite well, but you can see the south and the southwest did not do well, including southern Utah with this weather pattern. But then sometime around late January, early February, and I took this off of the web on February 8th, it changed, and it changed in a big way. You can see the, the high pressure is still located up here, and it's located down here, but in the middle where this, this atmospheric river came across, it put down all sorts of weather. Westerly flow, it was quite warm. We had rain below 7,500, snow above that. But we received up to 25 inches of snow water equivalent in the Logan drainage basin. And really, northern Utah benefited quite, uh, quite much from this. Southern Utah did not do very well at all. When you look at the precip anomaly for February as a result of this weather system, you can see the Pacific Northwest, including northern Utah, did quite well. Desert Southwest did not do well, including southern Utah. When you look at the precip anomaly for March, more of the same as this pattern continued. The rich got richer, the poor got poorer. Southern Utah still did not do, but northern Utah during March did quite well. When you look at snow, this is a graphic, and we're going to use this graphic all the way through, of all the different basins and average of all of the snow measurement stations by the NRCS in each respective basin. So the Bear River drainage is our northernmost basin. It's at 113% of median as we speak today. The Weaver is at 111. And what we see is the green is last year, the purple is the median, and the navy blue is where we are this year. Six Creeks at 89%. Utah Lake, 88%. Duchesne at 94%. The Upper Green at 147%. They did quite well. Even when that uh, ridge blocked the weather, when it came down off of Alaska, it skirted the Upper Green and the Colorado, and they've continued to do well. Lake Powell, which is the combination of the Green and the Colorado basins in the state of Colorado coming off into Utah, they're at 105%. And the severe at 78%, you can see these numbers starting to decline as we look in the south central part of Utah and then down in the Virgin at 59%. Really haven't had much snow activity, storm activity since December. It's unfortunate. When you look at temperature, this is the Salt Lake City t uh, Airport temperature anomaly for February. And the x axis is time for the month, and the y axis is degrees above normal or below normal. So 5, 10, 15 degrees above normal for each respective date. You can see we're around 10 degrees warmer than we typically would with some days up to 15 and 17 days. But I think the thing we want to look at is there's only been three days of below average temperature during February. And also during March, we've only had three days. And when you look at that consecutively, we had 38 consecutive above normal days. And that's mostly due to that atmospheric river of moisture and weather that came out of the area near Hawaii. And when you look at the maximum temperature anomaly from January through March with the entire U.S., we see western U.S. for the most part is above normal with the exception of maybe the Pacific Northwest. And, and Utah has been warmer than normal, but not nearly as bad as California and some of these other areas. When you look at the water supply volume forecast, we're going to look at the amount of water that's going to flow out 
from April 1st through the end of July. And these forecasts are made by the Colorado Basin River Forecast Center. And what we see is three respective forecasts. The forecast that was made on January, then February, then March. And you can see how it's progressed depending how the weather treated us. And we'll start with the bear, and they're at 90% of average for the volume of water expected to come out of the mountains. That's the forecast. Weber at 75, Six Creeks at 60, and Six Creeks is the area just to the east of Salt Lake County, Utah Lake, that's all the mountains to the east of Utah County, and they didn't do nearly as well as the farther south you sag, that great storm system that we saw in February didn't really put down much. When we look at the green, the upper green at 130% as of April forecast, the Yamp White 125, the Duchesne at 75, the lower green at 80, Upper main stem in the Colorado at 135, the Gunnison at 115, the Dolores at 90. And then when we look at South Central Utah, the Severe is at 45% of average. And then we look at the Virgin, and it's just a continual decline down to 20% of what they're expecting out of the mountains this year. Very unfortunate. So there you have it. This is Brian McInerney with the National Weather Service. Give me a call, drop me an email, and we'll go from there. Thank you.